Venice Beach, California, weighing 250 pounds, this is Steve! Oh yeah, baby, there it is. That's going back to 1992 and Battle Bowl, Starcade Lethal Lottery, when Sting took on Big Van Vader. And he was the surfer Sting back in the things. But <clears throat> that's how I always remember Sting from the beginning. Going back to Clash of the Champions, the first one, 1998, at Greensboro Coliseum. As a matter of fact, Sting's first match for WCW was in Greensboro Coliseum as well as September of 1987. And once again, here we are. We got Sting finishing up his career, a legendary career, the right way. Let's just make that clear. This was retiring the right way. I mean, okay, he could have taken a loss. I actually thought they were going to lose, but no. Sting gets the win. He gets to go ahead and take the Scorpion Deathlock and deliver it to get the win. Like That's great. I mean, I'm, I'm, I was, was was so cool to see that, and I was at Nicholas Jackson, right? Well, I was one that took the uh, submission, and overall, Darby Allen's he's he's nuts, nuts he is, and him and Darby, him and Sting, both taking plate glass window shots. Like, what is wrong with you, Darby Allen, man? What a freaking stump man that guy is! I'll tell you what, that was really. It was over the top. It was ridiculous, but you can remember that match. I mean, you're going to remember Sting and Darby Allen against Young Bucks. You will remember that match for as long as you want. That's quite a memorable way to remember his retirement. And that's it. Done. We didn't get to hear his entire speech because obviously he only had three minutes left in the, pro- in the program on the satellite feed. They had to go and cut off, but I'm sure we're going to see the whole thing later on. And that's it. Standout matches tonight. Let me just tell you, AEW, I mean, you could definitely go back and watch this pay-per-view again and would not be bored by a lot of the featured matches they had. They had some ridiculously good matches tonight. And this is the thing. For those that are WWE fans, you like what Elimination Chamber gave you? Listen, I got that. But for me, this is where AEW gave me the bread and butter. This is what they give me. This is where I get to have the customary give me the good matches give me some good matchups and just stack the card stack the girl with great matches match after match for match so we get it it's 40 year career for sting nearly 40 years and I tell you it was wonderful to go see now here's what we had going on in the pay-per-view itself we also had some old joe retain in a very very uh a very logical way on how they went and decided where we know that the ongoing feud with hangman, Adam page and Swerve Strickland is going to continue. And Adam page shot himself in the foot by how he ended up working in the match. And Strickland was going to get the match. He was going to get the win. It was just a matter of time. And it did not get a chance to be that way. So going back to, what was it? Wrestle dream. When page and Strickland had their initial start of the feud, and it culminated there. They had the Texas death match in full gear. Again, they were just going through and had a lot of things going on with their setup. And then Samoa Joe winning at world's end, the world title. And just seeing the build up over the last couple of months to get this going on. Samoa Joe, I mean, he made it a point. He was going to win anyway, but it was Strickland and page. That was the real gamut. That was the feud embedded into this world title feud. That was, well done. I enjoyed how they put it together. The three women match had a, a lot of good going on in the whole setup. In the women's world title match, everybody will say it. I'm going to say it too. Mariah May, damn, she looked exactly like Tony Storm. I don't pay attention to that much to detail, but she had the look. She looks like her. I mean, spitting. I mean, you could have kept her out there with the shades on. I wouldn't have never told you that was not Tony storm, but yeah, that was a hell of an entrance. That was really creative and very cool. Also the new set for dynamite. It looks like we get, finally see that we see that the graphic that they changed up for dynamite coming up in March. Those are also effective and they're going to be going on now. So we're going to see dynamite with a different look 
coming up, most likely this episode, upcoming Wednesday episode. So it'll be a different look to it. I'm interested to see what it looks like. Let's, okay, production changes. Everybody's got production changes. So here we go. Once again, we're getting in production changes again on this crap. And I'm like, okay, more important than uh, Revolution? No, no, not at all. But to come away with the fact that they don't have MJF right now, the world title picture is definitely in a different space. The depth of the roster really tells you a lot because you can think of how many stars we have right now that were not on this pay-per-view, but their current focus with the women's world title on Thomas Tori Storm is still holding on to her. Some people are saying she should go ahead and turn face. I don't think so yet. I think this character needs to be the... You need to see her, still hear, see her here continuously going along the whole time, just acting a fool. I don't want to see this character turn face. I don't know about you, but I don't want to see her turn face. Not yet anyway. Maybe after a while. The ankle tattoo stuff was a nice touch, by the way. But again, and sure, was it very generic the way they finished the match where Luther interfered and then Thomas Tilly Storm was able to go and turn it around on Deanna Parrazzo? Yeah. But they're having a good setup. I mean, that feud could continue. Again, I love Deanna Parrazzo. I think she's great. And so keep them together. Though that's a good, fresh matchup. That's fine. Hey, do we need necessarily, do I feel horrible that Brett Baker or Riho or, you know, Soraya or, you know, Ruby Soho or, you know, pick some of the others. Like we got women out there. They're probably out there. I mean, they didn't have, you know, only had one women's match on this particular show, but the TBS champion was featured over on the zero hour with Julia Hart and Sky Blue dropping to Willow Nightingale and Chris Statlander. So they got that going on. And that's basically the two women's feuds we're seeing for the most part anyway. So everybody else that's not in this picture, you know, we don't see Thunder Rosa as much, but she was on Zero Hour. Like there was, you know, they they have the women in their place, but just a couple of major spots for the in the card itself. International title. You know, when Orange Cassidy gets to the point where he's all taped up like he is again when he's almost to the point he's going to break because he's so beat up and injured but this time it wasn't because of the amount of matches he had it's because of the beat up the undisputed keeping them putting on we're putting on to orange cassidy to make it so that orange cassidy would drop the belt and when roderick strong comes out new new international champion so we got that wardlow comes away and becomes now a number one contender for the AW World Championship. That looks like Wardlow and Samoa Joe. You might as well lock that in for AW Dynasty coming up April 24th in St. Louis. We got that coming up. That'll be cool. A brand new pay-per-view, as they said. So I think that's what we're going to get probably next. We'll get Wardlow and Samoa Joe. They already got a built-in storyline. See, this is the thing. AW, you got storylines upon storylines upon storylines. So you can always get back to feuds and then you can just reheat something. So Wardlow and Samoa Joe, we're back to that again. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, for Samoa Joe, I don't know what he's going to do with the Undisputed Kingdom. He's right there on the island on his own, but he's taking on all comers. Then on top of that, you had a setup with the Blackpool Combat Club and Moxley and Castagnoli coming out as Road Warriors. That was a nice look. Nice throwback. Oh, yeah. Young Bucks also in old school ro- robes coming out to the ring. And hell of a match they had as well against FTR bloody as hell too. But that's the kind of matches we had like standout matches. Well, like what am I going to say that ha- hasn't been said about some of these matches? When you look at what we had at the start of the night. Okay. I didn't talk anything about the 12 man tag team match that started off the night. Uh, now starting off the night, first of all, the main card, AWTNT championship, Christian cage retains. And even with, you know, Daddy Magic Matt Menard, you know, coming back and helping out in some way, Daniel Garcia wasn't going to be. Christian Cage continues to go and hold on. And that patriarchy group is pretty cool. So, I mean, Christian Cage continued to be just a dick. And he's a very strong heel champion. Has just too many, you know, people in his disposal to go ahead and take away from any opponent he has right now. Then you got 20 minutes going off for Eddie Kingston, Brian Danielson. That was a hell of a match. And Danielson lost the match. 
shook Eddie Kingston's hand. And Eddie Kingston right now is on top of the world. He is happy upon happy. And it's nice to see where Eddie Kingston has gotten here at this level. Continental crown, continental title, world championship, New Japan strong OB weight championship. He just got it. It's all there for him. So like, that's incredible to see Eddie Kingston right now being heralded because this is the thing that I don't think people want to want to go and take credit for as well. Like AEW gives opportunities. They give spotlights where we've been seeing unsung heroes on this entire product. A lot of times, like when I think about it, Eddie Kingston, what an unsung hero, man. Like if you would have, you don't get him to get to be a bigger spot in any other company, but AEW. Okay. He was in TNA for a while. Had a nice presence there, you know, with the OGs and the setup there with the, uh, you know, the LAX crew, which was great, but it's different here. Like, it's just different. Eddie Kingston at, a, at another level. Like, there was the indie king, you know, level that he was before, the Mad King. But this other level he has right now. And by the way, you're talking about a guy, he says it himself, man. He is like, you don't care about promoters. He don't care about the shape of himself. He just says he's a wrestler. He goes out there and he does his work. And he does a great job of it can't knock him and so the fact that we have wrestlers like him that come into the space and yeah he's not your atypical but he is a throwback is what he is and we did get quite a bit of throwback as well like i felt like we got ecw throwback kind of stuff we got you know the for me it's just like give me good wrestling give me like that the strong you know move a mile a minute kind of stuff like Osprey and Takeshita, what a wild match that was. Again, all moves, 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 and just crazy movement. Like, this is like, you know, Takeshita, or even though he's at, at such a level right now, but him and Osprey, they're rolling up like Osprey's out there with Ricochet again back in the day, a couple of years ago, which also was one of those like match of the decade kind of things. This was a hell of a match. And I enjoyed what they were doing on this. Wardlow. With a whole lot of the people in the match, by the way, so they were already setting up Meet Madness for him, and then they went and switched around to this new All Star Scramble match. But after all of it said and done, no one was expecting, you know, either Dante Martin or Magnus or Brian Cage or Hook or Lance Archer or Chris Jericho to overcome Wardlow, who had the help of the Undisputed King out there to go and help him out to win the match. We talk about Roddy Strong. He wins over Orange Cassidy. So Undisputed Kingdom is starting to go ahead and make their way into a lot of things. I think with Undisputed Kingdom, we're just waiting for a couple of things to happen. Number one, we see that Kyle Riley is back. And that was great. Don't know what they're going to do with him right now coming up after this. But Kyle Riley is back. Is he going to be part of the group? I'm wondering if they're going to go and do something with him, how they're going to stand about. But again, they got multiple storylines right now where Roddy now has the IC title, the inter- international title. Wardle now with a title shot. Adam Cole, we got to see what's going to happen with him when he finally makes his way back in and he's back for active participation. Like, I mean, do you go with him and Kyle O'Reilly and then we go back to that kind of stuff again? Like, we could go back to that. Like, is he going to like be turncoat? And like, what do you do with that next? I don't know. But I'm curious about that. And then, as we said, Blackpool Combat Club, if you are, other strong match. By the way, a lot of time for all these matches, too. They gave lots of time. So overall, I enjoyed the whole show. As I said, with Steen going out there, I enjoyed what he did. He got to go ahead and celebrate with his family. The way they set up the AEW World Title match. No problem with all that. I am content. And... There's nothing much of storylines that really made me feel like, well, what else can he do more of? Not really, not necessarily. I'm just satisfied. Like, I had a good time. I enjoyed the pay-per-view. I thought it was really well done. A lot of great matches across the board. And that's what AEW does. Like, you know, I don't need them to go and have me blow away, you know, like, of course I thought they're going to have them do more storylines if I want to see them compete against WWE, but they're not. Like, the other thing, too, is that right now, for WWE, like the black the the bloodline stuff right now is another level. So no matter what, 
while The Rock is right now in part of the bloodline and what he's doing right now, it's nothing short of spectacular. Like The Rock's promos are as good. I think these are some of the best Rock promos I've ever heard. Like, I love what The Rock is doing right now. His promos are the best I've heard. This is the, this is him. I mean, he just feels in a zone right now. He is so serious, such a zone, such a narcissist, such a prick bastard. Like, I love it. And he's going to turn on Roman. You know that's going to happen at some point. We'll get Rock and Roman Reigns, and I'm going to love that match. That's going to be great. However they're going to do it. And they set up the tag team match. Like, let me tell you, WrestleMania is stacking up. Now, you gave me Rock and Roman Reigns, you know, set up. You're going to get you're going to get the rock on night one. Now in a tag team match, the ultimate bloodline tag team, you're going to set that up against Cody and Seth. Damn, damn, that's stacking it. So that's, I mean, that's your, so again, bloodline, Cody, the roads and all this, they're main eventing both nights. It's not the women. And there are no other, I'm sorry, Seth and, you know, Drew McIntyre? No, no. They're going to be in the undercard of night two. That's what it's going to be. Becky and Rhea? No, I don't think that's going to be an event either. That's going to be, again, Rock in the tag team with Roman? That's night one main event. And Cody and Roman, that's going to be night two main event. That's just the way it is. I look at it like that, and that just looks pretty solid. All right, I'm going to leave it like that. Keep it short and sweet. We're going to come back this Wednesday with another Wrestling Israel podcast, and we'll go ahead and look at all what that happens out of Revolution. We'll get Dynamite with a new look, and like I like the set, like the whole setup. I'm just content, man. I have nothing to complain about. I don't know. I mean, there's not much they can do to go ahead and break the threshold right now and improve on what they're doing right now. They just got to keep doing what they're doing. And I think one of the things that, you know, you see rankings coming back, the continuous move of getting certain stars up to the forefront and who they're going to focus on. You know, they got so many veterans here, but I think Tony Khan's doing the right thing with the number of stars that he is featuring right now that are on the come up. Darby Allen obviously is one of those pillars. It's right up there. Adam Page, Swerve Strickland, Osprey Takeshita, and a showcase tonight. Excellent. And then, you know, Wardo's up in that spot. <clears throat> and then your Garcia is also in that spot too. They you just did a really good job all together. Enjoyed it. Also nice to can hear Jim Ross out during Jim Ross during commentary for the match with Tony Schiavone. It was nice to see those two out there to be a part of this once again. That was the other part I really enjoyed more than anything. Also seeing St- Sting Sons come out in the two variations of Sting previous, which was good. You know, we saw Beach Blonde Sting and Wolfpack Sting, basically. And then we get the current Sting and like that whole setup. Really well done for the night. And now where does Darby Allen fit in now in his role as a single star? We already know he's going to do great out there. We already know he's going to stand out. Like, is the rub from Sting going to be so much that Darby Allen's going to now, <clears throat> is he going to get pushed towards the top again? Like, is he finally going to get a chance to go in, not just be in the title picture again, but like, will he be up there in the point? What I'd like to see is, I'd like to see Swerve Strickland win the title eventually. And I want him and Darby Allen to face each other again and let it be for the title. I want that someday. I hope that happens somewhere by the end of the year. That'll be a nice move. And that's for MJF. I'm wondering if like, you know, do we see him coming back anytime soon? Like it's been a couple of months. Is he still going to stay out there? I mean, do we want to see him back before money or nothing? Double or nothing? Or, I mean, does he come back for St. Louis? No, probably not. But I mean, the Undisputed Kingdom is starting to make their move and they're starting to get, get themselves presence right now. We'll have to see what that is. And, you know, go from there. Let's see who Tony Cotton decides to start making the stand out now more and more today, because that's one of the things. Everybody's like very much at an upper level. That mid card always feels somewhat important, but there's nobody that really stands out and is like far and above 
the pack right now in terms of stars. Nobody's really at that level yet, but we'll find out. So come back this Wednesday for another Wrestling for Podcast because wrestling needs us.